Welcome to Movie Class by Pizza Flicks. Please stay tuned for today's program, but first, some tasty tidbits from your host. He is the man that frightened America as television developed into a new national obsession. His groundbreaking series, Alcoa Presents, premiered January 20, 1959, beating that other show with that other guy by over nine months. Meet your guide into the world of the unknown and supernatural. The cult favorite of those who prefer their TV on the dark and paranormal side, John Newland. Born in Cincinnati, 1917, as a teenager, he started performing in vaudeville. After moving to Manhattan to study acting, he built his reputation on radio and theater until World War II intervened. Following a discharge from the Army Air Corps, Warner Brothers offered him a contract in Hollywood. In 1948, Newland appeared in two back-to-back Bulldog Drummond films with the suave Tom Conway as the super sleuth. That same year, he appeared in the show business drama Sons of Adventure with stuntman turned director Yakima Kanut and also the mysterious Homicide for Three. And that was it. Newland reflected on his short Hollywood career as an immediate failure. Back in New York, he became a ubiquitous presence in early live television, starring in numerous anthology programs including Lights Out, Philco Playhouse, Tales of Tomorrow, and lest we forget, Robert Montgomery Presents, in which he also worked as a director. By the mid-50s, Newland resettled in Los Angeles to mostly direct several seasons of the Loretta Young Show, which led to an opportunity of a lifetime and what would become known as One Step Beyond. The amazing drama you're about to see is a matter of human record. He hosted and directed all 96 episodes and occasionally acted in them too, notably in a landmark of network television and the most notorious episode of the series, The Sacred Mushroom. After three seasons, One Step Beyond came to an end and Newland was ready for something new, which brings us to today's feature presentation, The Return of Andrew Bentley, an episode of the anthology series Thriller, hosted by Boris Karloff and a teleplay by Richard Matheson, originally broadcast December 11, 1961. In the title role and direction by John Newland. Black secrets, jealously guarded, handed down. Spells, incantations, rituals, curses. The mysteries of the universe that have been revealed through the centuries only to a scattered, unscrupulous few who thrive on evil and aren't too particular about the final disposition of their immortal souls. Such a man was Andrew Bentley, and our story tonight concerns the efforts of the living to combat his return from the world of the dead. Our players are John Newland, Antoinette Bauer, Philip Burniff, Oscar Baregi, and Reggie Nalder. my friends. There are those who believe in the occult arts, and it is said even those who practice them. All that is required is the proper recipe, a gentleman's agreement with the devil, and an unflinching faith in the supernatural. Can it really be true? 
I don't think so. Everybody knows there's no such thing as magic. <laughs> Why? Why do we have to see him? Well, darling, I want to see him. He's my uncle. Besides, you've never even met him. I'm afraid. What? I'm afraid. Afraid of what? Haven't you any idea of why he wants to see you? Only what he said in his note. You've asked me that 25 times in the last two hours. You know as well as I that he said to come at once. Would you mind waiting for us, please? We won't be but a second. <laughs> Yeah, he looked... Well... Mr. Corbett, how good to see you again after so many years. Thank you, Jacob. How long has it been? Oh, too long, too long. Jacob, this is Mrs. Corbett. Uh, Madame. Jacob has been with Uncle Amos forever. Not forever, but a long, long time. Your uncle is waiting for you. All right. Well, Jacob, how have you been? Oh, well enough, thank you, sir. Enter. My wife, Sheila. Uncle Amos? Sit, sit down, sit down. Uncle, I was trying to tell Sheila on the train how long it had been since I, I was am in this about place. to die. What did you say, Uncle? I say I am about to die. I am going to leave everything that I have to you. I'm not happy about this, but since you are my only living relative, I. We have no choice. There are, however, certain conditions. What are they, Uncle? You will have to live in this house. I love this house, Uncle. Some of my happiest childhood memories are here. That's, that's good, that's good. There are, however, one or two other conditions. What are they, Uncle? You will remain here and do my bidding. Which is, Uncle? That you spend 24 hours of every day here. And that you allow no day or night to go by without examining the burial vault beneath this house. My body will lie there and the vault will be sealed as I direct. If at any time you should discover that someone or some... Uh, someone has been tampering with the vault, you will find my, my written instructions in the top drawer of this desk. In return for this house, 
and all that I possess, which is considerable. Will you promise to do these things exactly as I demand? I promise, Uncle. Exactly as I demand! Exactly. I'll tell Jacob to see to your thing. I'll block him yet. Amos Wilder is still a match for you. Do you hear me, Andrew? Do you hear me? <laughs> Can you hear me, Andrew? Can you hear me? The frightened challenge of an old man. To who? Or to what? Questions. How does the old man know that he will soon be dead? And why does he fear that which may follow his death? Questions. Questions which will be answered before the night is done, as sure as my name is Boris Carlo. But what are the questions that remain unanswered? <laughs> Amos. Why is he playing the organ at this time of night? I don't know. It is his house, darling. It sounds as if it were coming from the cellar. You go back to bed. I'll go down and see what it is. Ellis, let me go with you, please.
Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. Difficult day. One that I'm not sorry to see end. It's been a horrible day. Yes, indeed. Funeral, interment, reading of the will, all in a matter of hours. But it's over now. And all this is yours. Including a sealed burial vault. Oh, I shouldn't let that bother me. It wouldn't ordinarily. But after seeing Uncle Amos only last night, and having him tell us that he was about to die. Dr. Weatherby, the last thing he said to us was, I won't be seeing you again. How did he know? Well, I hadn't really intended to tell you so soon. It wasn't quite that mysterious. Tragic, yes. But not mysterious. What do you mean? When your uncle said, I won't be seeing you again, he meant that he intended to take his life with poison. What? How do you know? Well, even if I hadn't examined him, I'd have known. The order of arsenic is unmistakable. But why? Was he ill? No, not physically. His mind? I'm afraid so. Yes, well, that would certainly explain some of his odd conditions. Conditions? That must be why he said what he did. And what would that be? He said, I'll block him yet. Him? Yes. Amos Wilder is still a match for you. Do you hear me, Andrew? Do you hear me? Andrew? What do you suppose this Andrew might be? Thank you, Jacob. Yes, Jacob? I, sir, I, I realize that this is not the time for this, but... What is it? I wish to leave, sir. Leave? Yes, sir. You mean permanently? Yes, sir. But why? I have my reasons, sir. Well, I'm sure you have, but after 30 years with my uncle... 33, sir. 33 years then, Jacob, and you want to leave? Yes, sir. Is it us, Jacob? Oh, no, Madame Corbe. Uh, of course it isn't. It's... Well, what is it, Jacob? Well, I understand that I can't force you to say what it is. But couldn't you stay at least a little while until my wife and I have a chance to... to familiarize ourselves with the house, or at least replace you with someone else? Well, perhaps for a little while. I am sorry. I wonder why Jacob was so upset. Did you see how he was? He's been acting strangely ever since my uncle died. Why do you suppose he'd want to leave after so many years? Do you know? Dr. Weatherby, who is Andrew? Not is, Mr. Corbett. Was. Andrew Bentley died two years ago. house and agreeing to these incredible conditions. I don't know. Except that... Well, I did promise. And it really isn't that much trouble. After all, he did leave us everything he owned. Didn't he? all right. Yeah, now that wasn't so bad, was it?
noticed that almost every book in here is about the occult. Yes. You know, I can remember my mother telling me stories of Uncle Amos and his black magic. You never told me that. No wonder he was so strange. Let me show you something. Yes. Your uncle gave this to me before he died, sir. He told me to give it to you after you had examined his tomb. Thank you, Jacob. What is it? Uh, I beg your pardon, sir. Uh, supper will be served shortly. Ellis, you must bring Burkhardt here. If he has not already protected me. Otherwise, see marked book on second shelf of seventh compartment in study. Do we know any Burkhardt? I don't think so. Well, let's see if there's a marked book on the second shelf of the seventh compartment. One, two, three. Four, five, six. The rights of protection. Protection? Against what? Yes? The Reverend Burkhardt to see you, sir. Good evening, Mr. Corbett. Good evening, Reverend. This is my wife, Sheila. Mrs. Corbett. Please, come in and sit down, Reverend. Uh, no, thank you. I only have a moment or so. I just wanted to stop by and, first of all, extend my condolences on your uncle's tragic demise. Secondly, to explain why I couldn't appear at the funeral to bless your uncle's grave. So that's what he meant by protection. I beg your pardon? See, you of course understand why that uh, protection, as he termed it, had to be withheld. I presume you mean because he took his own life. Yes. As far as this book is concerned... The rights of protection? Yes, uh, put it away. Why? For your own good. From things. Walk the night. Race existent, quae noctem obscura tatem quae suem pervadent. There are things which stalk abroad by darkness. Demones qui homines in cultus, saipis in temptationem. Demons lured. Demons lured on by man's ignorance. Mr. Corbett, Cavent, please. Avent omnus, but semitipsi maleficio, eorum se exponant atque ad protegendos mortuos et tumbas, defensores se erigent. Let no bodies, it means dead bodies, be exposed to their evil wrath, that there be all manner of protection from mortos et tumbas, crypts and vaults, crypts and vaults. Quia demones Per loca mortifera sine lege, vagantur, arquer interficiendas animas. For know you that these are soulless demons who haunt the places of the dead, 
seeking to possess these dead and use them. I don't think I can stand this house much longer. Why? What's the matter? There's something unnatural here. Strange noises. No, that's just... Oh, don't be silly. This is the most incredible book. I just read something... I don't Listen. want to hear it. How long are we going to stay in this place? How long? 24 hours of every day. What do you mean by that? We promised, or rather I promised, to take care of my uncle's grave. Forever? Surely you're not serious. What do you want me to do? Give up this marvelous house and a sizable bank account and go back to that grubby little apartment at the university? Do you enjoy spending the rest of your life kowtowing to Dean's wives? You know, Sheila, sometimes you and I have very little in common. I'm sorry. Really, I am. It's just that this whole business has me edgy, too. Forgive me. It's just that now, at last, I have the time to write. I'll never finish my book if I have to go on preparing for classes day after day after day. I know, I know. It's just that this house depresses me so. But you'll get used to it. I'm sure you will. I have. Ellis! Where are you going? To examine the vault. You do believe it, don't you? I don't know. You want to come with me? No. Sheila. If it gets to be too much for you, I mean, really too much, we'll leave, I promise. All right? Who are you? Get away from that door. Darling. What? Darling. 
that won't sound. What was it? What happened? There was a man down there. There was someone trying to get into the vault. Into the vault? I told him to stop. It was terrifying. I tried to stop him. I started to move toward him. And suddenly I heard a sound. Over my shoulder, and I saw. Oh. Monsieur Corbett, I. Jacob, I've just come from the vault. Sir? Someone was down there, someone trying to get into the vault. Someone I've never seen before. Who is he, Jacob? He was tall. He wore a long black cape. You know who he is, don't you, Jacob? He's the reason you're frightened, isn't he? He's the reason you want to leave. Who is he, Jacob? Jacob! Who is he, Jacob? He is Andrew Bentley, sir. He is Andrew Bentley! Terrified him. Who is Andrew Bentley? You know who he is, don't you, Doctor? Yes, I know. Who is he? Am I to understand that what Jacob saw was Andrew Bentley? Sheila saw him, too. I saw him. You saw him? Yes. You couldn't have. He's dead. The man we saw is not dead. Nobody has seen Andrew Bentley for two years. Who is he? Tell me. I never knew him very well. He was a man I never had any dealings with, with whom I never cared to have any. In all my life, I've never known a human being who, whose mere presence was so completely evil. Why was he evil? He was said to be a sorcerer, a practitioner of black magic. You believe this? I don't know. All I know is that everyone here feared him. I feared him. Why? What were you afraid of? It's impossible to say, really. It was all emotional, something sensed rather than understood. 
Things that people claim to have seen and heard. Weird companions. A strange, horrifying sound. What kind of sound? Why do you ask? Because we heard a sound. Tonight. A terrible sound. Is this the man you saw? Yes. That's Andrew Bentley. Your uncle gave me that photograph. But what is that? His familiar. His what? His creature. A demon summoned to do his bidding. I saw it. I saw it. But why is he here? Why is Bentley here? For know you that those soulless demons haunt the places of the dead. Seeking to possess those dead and use them. They want my uncle's body. That's what he was afraid of. But what are we to do? The letter. What letter? The last thing my uncle told me was that if ever we suspected that someone was tampering with the vault, we would find written instructions in a letter in the top drawer of his desk. They come from me as indeed they must have if you are reading this. There is but one course you can take. Bentley's corpse must be found and utterly destroyed. And he is dead. But we. we saw him. I killed Bentley almost two years ago, stabbed him with a hunting knife, which must still be fixed in his skeleton. What you see walking in the night is his ghost. He may look real, but he is not. What you see is a shade, a specter without substance. Both Burkhart and Weatherby suspected that I aided Bentley in his obscene rites. But that was long before I knew what depths of evil lurked in Bentley's heart. Yes, I knew about your uncle's preoccupation with this... this... Black magic. Yes, if you will. But I didn't know it had gone this far. When he summoned forth that hideous and hellish demon of his, I had no choice. I killed Andrew Bentley. After I killed him, I placed his body in the vault. But the familiar moved it and hid it somewhere in the grounds. I have not been able to find the remains, but I have kept them from the house with my magic. They torment me constantly. I cannot go on. Yet I fear what must follow when I am dead. What does he mean? They will want my body, Ellis, so that it can be inhabited by Bentley's demon. Save me from this unspeakable horror. Find his corpse. Destroy it. Now. It must be somewhere in the cell. Wait. You can't do this alone. It's extremely dangerous. We need the Reverend Burkhardt.
this way. Cross water. What was that sound? I heard it all the way inside the church. Mother, help us, please. We must find Andrew Bentley's body. And destroy it. Please. My carriage is behind the church. Quickly. of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, I command thee, Spirit, leave this place and return to thy grave. His remains are destroyed. It will return to depths from whence it came. Now, for the love of God, rest in peace. No. From this time on, there will be little peace for the soul of Andrew Bentley. For the sake of God, justice will now be done. Mm -hmm. 